vintage cine films on my channel have all been transferred from original 8mm and Super 8 film to a digital video. And over the time that I've been doing this I've tried different methods with varying degrees of success. The early films on my channel, such as this one here showing a visit to Venice in the 1960s, were made by simply running a film through an old fashioned cine projector, projecting onto a white screen and then filming the moving images with a video camera. As you can see, there are flickers and the quality is not that good. Matching the speed of the projector with the frame rate of the video camera helps but still disappointing. High-end professional telescene companies use frame-by-frame -frame scanning machines, which cost thousands and thousands of pounds and, as you would expect, can deliver broadcast quality results. For my cinefilm memories, I've settled on somewhere in between, a frame-by-frame -frame scanner priced for the serious amateur market and I'm going to show you how I scan a film using a reflector scanner. I've tried different ways of doing it and this is the way that i found that produces the best results. In another film I'll also show you how to very easily edit and process that scanned film in iMovie and end up with the final results you see on this channel. So this is the reflector scanner and in the box there is the scanner, 12 volt DC power adapter, USB cable, TV out cable, 5 inch take up reel, two reel adapters and this little brush and of course the user's manual. Machines such as this are available on Amazon and you can pick one up for around the £400 mark. There are various makes, the Wolverine Pro, Reflector and Win8, but they all seem to be basically the same machine and I've done over 100 films so far and the machine is still going strong. The first job is to clean the film. I put the film reel onto a cine film viewer and I bought this one off eBay for just a few pounds. Winding the film from one reel to the next, I gently wipe the surface of the film with a non-abrasive lint-free wipe. Peck pads are good. The wipe is soaked in isopropyl alcohol which removes a lot of the grime built up over the years. There are expensive film cleaners available which are very very good but I find that the isopropyl alcohol works just fine. Next, I brush and blow away any potential dust and dirt. And line the film up through the scanner gate, making sure that the sprocket hole edge of the film is placed under the white tabs. The film viewer is also useful to use as the spool to take the film through the scanner as the largest reel that you can put on the scanner spool is 5 inches and sometimes you may have bigger reels to scan. There is a clearly marked path to guide the film to the take-up spool, but I found that I get far less jerky results by not using the take-up reel at all. I let the film collect in a box on the floor and when finished I use the film viewer to rewind the film by hand. This also saves wear and tear on the scanner's motor. Using the scanner's TV out to see the results on a monitor is much easier to watch than the small built-in screen. Set the selector to either normal 8mm or Super 8 and you're ready to begin. The scanned film is saved as an MP4 file on an SD card. The maximum size it can take is 32GB. I have found that it's better not to adjust the scanner settings but rather leave it to when I edit the film later. Nevertheless you can change the exposure and the sharpness if you wish. Also you can adjust the framing, moving it left or right, and up and down, and zooming in. But again I don't alter any of these but rather capture as much of the original film as possible. I can always crop the film in editing and remove the visible sprocket holes then. So, the film has been scanned and I have an MP4 file on the SD card. There is a USB cable provided to connect it to your computer. I find it just as easy to put the card into a reader on the computer and load the file into iMovie to edit. So to see what I do next, take a look at the video how to simply edit the scanned cine film in iMovie. The link to that film right here. Thanks for watching.